Hello, welcome to our video. This presentation entails one sub-study of my colleague's PhD project, Mr. Luc Meyer. And in this study, we will present the results of a cohort of young normal hearing English speaking adults when performing our vocal emotion recognition test via a humanoid now robot, like the one here in the picture, compared to when taking the test in our standard interface, which is a portable computer. The test is called a MOHI test, and it was designed in our speech perception laboratory, directed by Dennis Beschkent in Groningen, the Netherlands. It is part of a test battery called PICA, which stands for Perception of Indexical Cues in Kids and Adults. The test uses pseudo-speech material as stimuli, recorded with one of three emotions, either happy, angry, or sad. The test consists of a training phase where four stimuli are presented to familiarize the participant with the task and 36 following stimuli for the data collection phase. The final score is given as the sensitivity index or D prime, both per emotion and as the mean vocal emotion D prime and test duration. We had 28 young normal hearing English speaking participants all of which took the Emohi test twice, once using the computer and once using the NOW robot. The order of the interfaces was randomized. Half of the cohort started with the computer and the other half started with the robot. All stimuli were calibrated to be presented at 65 dBSPL. After taking both tests, participants were asked to fill in a questionnaire to assess their user experience and their preference between both interfaces, the computer and the now robots. For the computer, all participants' responses were logged when clicking or tapping on the clown with a facial expression showing the selected emotion, either happy, angry, or sad. And for the robot, responses were logged when tapping on the tactile sensors located on the hands and the head of the robot. Each sensor corresponded to one emotion. Here are the results per emotion per interface. Um, performing Bayesian repeated measures ANOVA, we observe moderate evidence of the interfaces being similar when evaluating D prime across emotion categories. Moreover, there is a strong evidence of an effective emotion on the D prime scores, and a moderate evidence of no interaction between interface and emotion categories. If we look at the figure, we can see that there is no significant difference between the emotions of happy and angry. We hypothesize that this is linked to both emotions being of high arousal, so it is easier to confuse them, compared to sad, which is low arousal, and which was easier for participants to tell apart from all three. So the higher the D prime, the easier it is for them to categorize that emotion. When looking at the mean vocal emotion D prime, which is obtained when averaging all emotion categories, a Bayesian paired sample t-test showed moderate evidence of no difference between D prime scores of both interfaces, which means that they were comparable. Finally, a paired sample t-test to compare the duration of the tests between interfaces shows no statistical difference when using both frequentist and Bayesian approaches. So once more, the results were comparable. When looking at the user experience results, we see something interesting. We see that the vast majority of participants preferred the robot over the computer for all five questions. As a general discussion, um, we see that all data obtained during this study demonstrates how the robot is functionally comparable to the computer. The study also showed how the sound quality of the robot speakers has no significant impact in the MOHI test results, which is one of the main questions we have faced throughout our experiments using the NOW robot specifically for speech perception tasks. The user experience results also highlight the potential that using a robot as an alternative interactive interface for repetitive testing, such as our vocal emotion recognition test has. This is particularly important to consider when testing vulnerable populations, such as hard of hearing children and older adults, whose attention span and cognitive abilities are limited compared to those of a young adult. 
hence counting with the robot to make the testing experience more engaging and fun, might ensure both data reliability and a maintained concentration of the participant throughout the test. Further improvements of the robot setup could involve tools such as automatic speech recognition for both the logging of responses and scoring of the test and offering a natural conversation throughout the whole human-robot interaction, increasing even more its engaging factor. Similarly, it would be interesting to explore how both the perception of the robot and the participant's concentration change as they have multiple interactions with the robot. It is possible that our results are linked to participants being excited, especially if this was their first time interacting with a robot due to the novelty effect, showing a high preference to use it again over a computer with which we are all more familiar and might even find boring to use, especially for this type of testing. Thank you very much for watching. And if you have any questions, please catch us during either the conference or via email.